What's going on Diablo 2 fans? My name is Debrunski and today I'm going to show you my Pindle Running Fire Stork. This character and her build is literally set up for one thing and that's farming Pindle on single player as fast and as quickly as possible. She has lots of MF, lots of faster run walk and I would almost want to go out on a limb and say that she's probably one of the best Pindle Running characters in the game. She's kind of up there with an Amazon too. It's hard to say which one is really the best but guys let's take a look at this character build. All right, guys, so before I go over this character's gear, her stat points, that kind of thing, I wanted to provide a little bit of an overview on why farming Pendle is so important, and I wanted to make it very clear that this character is specifically for farming Pendle on single player. Now, Pendle on Battlehead, he can still drop everything except for Tyro's Might, Azeroth, and Arachnid's Mesh, but you can't repetitively farm Pendle over and over again like you can in this video because I'm on single player, you're gonna end up getting Realm down. So guys, I just wanted to make that really clear. If you do wanna farm Pendle on Battle.net, you're probably gonna wanna throw in other farming routes or monsters into the rotation, like maybe Eldritch and Shank and then hit Pendle and then uh, restart your game. So I just wanted to make that clear to you guys so you don't end up getting Realm down or think that this is kind of a Battle.net sort of character. It's, it's not. As far as your stat points go, it's pretty straightforward. Like every character build I've ever put on YouTube so far, it's a max Vita Sorceress. So we have 156 points in his strength, which is the bare minimum requirement to use Spirit. Now I'm using Spirit to hit the 105 FCR breakpoint, and I'll go into that a little bit more when I go over her gear, but I feel like running a 105 FCR breakpoint is more efficient using a Fire Sorceress. I think you can get away with a 63 on a Bliss Sork, but uh, this is a Fire Sork Pindle running build, so I wanted to go with the 105 FCR. That's why I have 156 in his strength, so I can use the Spirit. Um, Dexterity, zero, nothing. Uh, energy, nothing as well. And then put all the remaining points into Vitality. Now I am using Enigma on this character, so I have a lot of extra points I can put into Vitality because of the strength bonus from the Rune Word. More on that when I jump into the gear, but you can see I dumped all my points in Vitality, 569 points. So this Sorceress has 1,516 life uh, before bow, and we're not even going to bow because that's wasted time for farming Pindle. But that's pretty much the stats all wrapped up. The skill tree is really straightforward with this character. Like I mentioned in the overview guys, this character is for one thing only and that's for farming Pindle as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So keep that in mind when I go over the skill points and the allocation of them for this character build. But as far as the cold skill tree goes, I didn't put a single point in this tree. I didn't even put a point into frozen armor and that's because in my opinion stopping to buff up with frozen armor is just wasted time, we don't have to do it so I don't even bother with any points in the cold skill tree with this character. The skill point investment for the lightning tree is really straightforward as well. We only invest two hard points for this character. One point into telekinesis, and that's a prereq to open up teleport, and then one hard point into teleport. Now I didn't even put a point into static field because in my opinion, for pindle farming only, static field is kind of a waste of time. Not saying for general PVM or boss farming, it's an amazing skill for knocking down health on endgame bosses like Bale. Static Field is awesome, but in my opinion for farming Pindle, I think it's not needed or it's a waste of time, especially with this Fire Sword build that we're using. So just one point into Telekinesis and one point into Teleport. And the reason why I think a Sork is better than a Javazon for farming Pindle is that as soon as we hit that red portal with the 105 FCR Bray point that I have with this character, we can teleport up to Pindle really quick and close that gap. Even a Javazon with Enigma, so Enigma gives a Javazon teleport, but the FCR breakpoints are so brutal for an Amazon that I think the Sorceress can close that gap a lot quicker, and that's why I think she's ultimately a better character than the Javazon for farming Pindle. So as you can imagine, being a dedicated Pindle running Fire Sword build, a lot of her skill points are gonna be vested in the Fire Skill Tree. Now I'm gonna break them down one by one, but one thing I wanted to point out before I go over the skill tree is why I like to farm Pindle as a Fire Sorceress. And that's because if a mercenary is using Infinity, which he is, you will always be able to break Pindle's fire immunity. I think that's really important for efficiency over the long haul because say you're running with a little bit of a weaker geared Cold Sork, if Pindle spawns his Cold Immune, you're either gonna have to abort the mission or wait for your mercenary to kill him. So over the long haul, that's really gonna slow your runs down and you're gonna be a little bit less efficient. On the other hand though, Infinity is really expensive. So you can definitely farm Pindle with a Cold Sork. I'm not saying you can't. 
It's just, I think if you're going to do 500 runs in a row, you're going to be able to do them a lot faster with the character set up like this with Infinity. That's just what I think anyways. But now let's go over the skill tree. So I put 20 points into Fire Bolt, 20 points into Fire Ball, 20 points into Meteor, and then 20 into Fire Mastery. And that's just to fully synergize Fireball. And most of the killing, at least in my personal preference, is used through Fireball. I don't really like to use Meteor. I don't like the casting delay. So then I also put 20 points into Warmth. And that's just so you're never going to have any mana issues at all. It's just going to be able to recover pretty much as fast as you can use your spells and use up your mana. And I put uh, one point into Blaze, one point into Firewall, and that's just pre wreck to get Meteor. pre wreck, sorry. And then I put uh, my remaining points into Inferno. So I'm level 97, so I only ended up putting a couple extra points into Inferno. But that was just to synergize the average fire damage on Meteor. And like I said, I don't really even use Meteor. But uh, if you guys like to, it just boosts Meteor's damage a little bit. Uh, but I like to primarily rely on fireball damage. So now let's take a look at the gear for this character build. And to be honest, it's probably going to be the most interesting part for you guys of this video. So if you look above me, that's all the main takeaway breakpoints for this character, like the FCR breakpoints she hits, how much MF, her faster run walk, that kind of thing. But keep in mind, guys, that when I was trying to come up with this character build, I was trying to think of it as like a triangle where one point is stacking as much MF as you can, the other point is stacking as much faster run walk as you can to get to the portal as quickly as possible, and then the other point of the triangle is trying to maximize her damage so that the clear speed is there as well. So try and keep that in mind as I go over the gear selection, all right? So in terms of her gloves, I'm using double up to Mage Fist, so that's just for the FCR and the one to fire skills. Uh, Isted Aussie, three, uh, three to Sorcerer skills to help boost her damage and ADMF. I'm using an Isted Shaco for style points. You can absolutely use a perfect Topaz, that's fine. Uh, Caster Amulet with two to Sorc skills and 17 FCR. The 17 FCR is really important for helping us hit that 105 FCR breakpoint. And then I'm using Spirit, again, for the two doll skills and the faster cast rate. You could use something like a Forested Monarch, uh, or maybe Rhyme if you wanted to go a little bit cheaper and get MF, but uh, you wouldn't be able to hit that 105 FCR breakpoint, so that's really important and why I chose to go with Spirit on this build. Uh, for her boots, uh, War Travelers, uh, these are 46 MF, they're really nice. They have 25% faster run walk as well, that's really important. For her rings, just two Nagel rings. You could use 40 MF blue rings, but uh, I'm lazy and I don't identify every blue ring that drops, so I just use 30 MF Nagel rings. Uh, for her belt, uh, Arachnid's Mesh, and that's just the one to all skills and the faster cast rate it helps us reach that 105 FCR breakpoint. But this uh, entire build centers around using Enigma. The two to all skills is nice from the Enigma. The 97 MF at me being a level 97 character is really nice as well, but the main reason is that 45 faster run walk. So the faster run walk on Enigma and the War Traveler boots helps add up, but on Switch this is really important. I'm not using a CTA, I'm using a Harmony Bow. Now this was suggested in a prior Blizzork panel running build video that uh, I did. And I wasn't actually using Harmony on that build, but I decided to use it on this one, and it does make a huge difference in overall efficiency. And that's due to the level 10 uh, Vigor Aura that this rumor gives us. So if you combine the faster run walk from my gear and the faster run walk, or sorry, the Vigor Aura from this bow, plus the Charmed, which I'm going to go over, this character hits 91 faster run walk, which is huge for getting from the top of the Herogoth waypoint down to the red portal as quickly and as efficiently as possible. The inventory and how you balance out uh, your charms is really personal preference. I tried to find a nice balance between adding some extra faster run walk and stacking as much MF as I could. So guys, just keep in mind that uh, you could add more faster run walk charms if you wanted to or take some away to add more 7 MF small charms. It's totally up to you. This is just how I kind of balanced out my character. So I'm using a 40 MF uh, Geed's Grand Charm, Torch and Annie, which they're just to boost the damage. Uh, it's a 1820 Source Torch and an 1820 uh, Annie Charm. So those are really nice. But this entire top row here, 
is different assorted faster run walk charms. So I decided to run one entire run, uh, sorry, one entire row of faster run walk charms just because over the long haul, if you really want to do a lot of serious pinnel farming, which this character is built around, I feel like it's a nice trade-off sacrificing a little bit of MF to just get to that portal as quick as possible. But uh, the rest of these small charms are just different assorted 6 and 7 MF small charms. So there is room to add a little bit more MF if you were to run perfect 7 MF small charms everywhere. And if you really wanted to, you could drop the Tomb of Identify and the town portal as well to add some extra fast run mod charms or whatever it's totally up to you i didn't actually for this character build but uh i just wanted to point that out that there is kind of ways different ways you can uh, stack your faster run walk your mf to your liking if you think that 500 mf isn't enough for serious panel running you can swap out a bunch of these charms to add more mf and you could hit 600 or 600 plus so the last thing to cover for this build video is the mercenary's gear. So we'll start with the weapon because it's the most important piece of the puzzle and that's using infinity because like I mentioned before, infinity is going to help break Pindle's fire immunity. So we have to have this rune word for farming Pindle efficiently with a fire sword build. The build honestly kind of falls apart without infinity. I mean, you can still clear Pindle without infinity as long as he doesn't spawn fire immune but the clear times are going to be a lot slower. If you don't have infinity I would totally recommend farming a cold sork over farming Pindle as a cold sork sorry as opposed to a fire sorceress. So the body armor I'm just using an e-bugged fortitude and that's just to maximize the merc's damage so if he does happen to get a chance to run in there to hit Pindle before I've killed him with a fireball he can just do it as quickly as possible. And the helmet is just in Dariel's Visage. Uh, it's a 10 life leech, 30 strength in Dariel's with a rare jewel in it that has fire res. This is a pretty standard uh, mercenary setup to be honest. Just the classic infinity, fortitude, and in Dariel's Visage. Nothing too crazy. So now let's take a look at this build in action. Now the runs are pretty straightforward and you could arguably say very boring. You switch to Harmony in town for the Vigor Aura and then run to the Red Pinnel Portal as fast as possible. This is where the faster run walk on Enigma, War Trabs, and the small charms in our inventory really shines. Now one really important point here guys, and I cannot stress this enough, never ever get your Halls of Pain waypoint if you plan on ever farming Pendle with your character. If you do, you're going to lose the Red Pendle Portal and your ability to efficiently farm him. So when you enter the portal, switch back to your main hand and teleport to Pendle as quickly as possible. This is where I think running the 105 FCR breakpoint trumps the 63. Again, we want to get to Pendle as fast as possible so we can save time over the course of hundreds of runs. I choose to farm Pendle on players 1 because increasing the difficulty count only improves the drops of his minions, but Pendle himself, no matter what the player difficulty setting, is always limited to dropping 2 items. So maximizing the efficiency of killing him on a lower player difficulty setting makes the most sense in my opinion. Besides, he's the only one that can drop those really nice uniques like Crown of Ages and Death's Fathom. The runs go by really quick and they can be boring but it really pays off when you drop those special crazy items like this. Ooh. Oh! Yes! Yes! Oh, yes! Well guys, there you have it. That's my build guide on the uh, ultimate Pindle running fire sword build. Now there's so many different ways that you could make this character. You could add more MF, you could make it a blizz baller, you could go pure blizzard and just crank your MF through the roof. But I feel like this build was a really nice combination between being able to get to Pendle as quickly as possible and still balancing damage, clear speed, and MF. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you could throw a thumbs up on it, share it if you enjoyed it, uh, and even consider subscribing if you're new to my YouTube channel. I would really appreciate that. I generally post uh, one YouTube video a week, and then I try and stream once or twice a week as well. So really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, but that's all there is for today, guys. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you later.